this is Jane Lowe and I'm at Singapore International Cyber Week 2023 here at Golfware in Marina Bay Sands in Singapore. And with me today, I'm very pleased and very privileged to have Yuri Balujin, who is the CEO and co-founder with Eclipsion. And he will be sharing with us on the highlights of his presentation earlier today about securing trust in this ever-evolving digital landscape that we are living in today. So thank you so much for your time today. Thank you, Jean. Uh, it's a pleasure to be here and it's an important topic to talk about. Yeah, absolutely. A very important topic. Um, I was going to ask, right, um, when we talk about uh, the cyber threat landscape today, we hear a lot about ransomware, we hear a lot about malware, supply chain attacks, and then we talk about, you know, uh, so how some of these are originating from the software, application software like Microsoft vulnerabilities, right? But we hear very seldom about the software living on the hardware of all these sort of devices that we have, um, you know, from mobile phones to laptop. Um, we talk about software bill of materials, but there's hardly any sort of conversation around the same concept for hardware. So what do you think? Uh, thank you, Jane. Uh, this is the problem. This is the problem that uh, the software is everywhere. It's ubiquitous. It's in every device. It's in every piece of infrastructure and in every component in every device. And we don't hear much about that software because it's opaque, it's obscure, and, uh, um, you know, but like any other software, whether it's an application or a software inside a network device or IoT device, it's vulnerable. That's right. Yeah, it seems like this, um, for example, a laptop that we have today, it seems like it's like an entirely black box in terms of the different components that are on the, uh, in the laptop, right? So we're talking about many different suppliers, million of code that's running each of these piece of component. And so there's potentially a very, very big attack surface that we're talking about. Not only it's a black box, but it's also an extremely complex black mm. box. When I, you know, I use an example that a typical PC is, uh, is built by over 265 suppliers. And each company, mm -hmm. each supplier is building those components in a PC That's and right. developing code that runs in those components. Yeah, exactly. And also the suppliers, the different suppliers, each one goes through like a very, very long supply chain. So from the design phase to the, I guess, the manufacturing, the deployment, the transportation, distribution. So at each stage, there's the potential for malicious actor to inject some of this malicious code. It's a wild west. It's, it's a, a wild, wild west. west. Okay. At any point in the supply chain, at any uh, any of the uh, uh, of those links in the supply chain, a uh, a compromise may happen. But supply chain risk is way more than that. Even if the compromise hasn't happened in any of those suppliers, which is a tall order, you know, which is a uh, uh, very unlikely scenario with uh, today's complexity of the supply chain, but. All of these vulnerabilities, all of these components, and all of the code that is uh, developed by those uh, suppliers and vendors has vulnerabilities. So even if it's okay now, mm -hmm. but you know when we bought that laptop or a computer or yeah. a piece of network device or or, or smart device, right. then. Three months from now, it can be compromised because of one of those vulnerabilities. Yeah, so talking about all these uh, potential vulnerabilities that may emerge, right? Um, I think many people may be familiar with, for example, the uh, potential vulnerabilities on the CPU, which is a spectre and the meltdown, right? That was disclosed, I believe, um, three, four years, 2017. But this is just the CPU, and it's just very quite specific to a type of processor. But we're talking about more than just the CPU, right? You mentioned that's the, um, the uh, BMC, all sorts of controllers. And then, of course, there's the SSD, right? Potentially, there could be vulnerabilities on that. And, of course, the BIOS. And you also mentioned about the UEFI, right? So UEFI, I think, for many of our audience may, who may not be too familiar with it, tell us about that and what are the potential threats that may exist that could be, um, you know, exploit vulnerabilities that may exist that could be exploited by attackers? Uh, absolutely. Well, the, the first is uh, every computer is a system of systems. 
uh, all those components is a very complicated computers inside every, you know, inside our computer. Even CPU, when we talk about CPU, is not a monolithic component. Mm -hmm. It has multiple microcontrollers running multiple types of operating systems and, and firmware and microcode and software inside the CPU, and all of that has vulnerabilities. So these vulnerabilities you mentioned in uh, uh, Spectrum L down, uh, as well as uh, you know all those types of uh, sp speculative or transient execution vulnerabilities. It's only one class of vulnerabilities okay. that affects that particular component, the uh, the, the, the processor, microprocessor. Mm -hmm. But in majority of the cases, those components that run inside critical devices, they run regular software. Maybe Linux-based OS, maybe uh, some kind of real-time operating system, maybe some kind of other software um, um, uh, software architecture, uh, and as a result, majority of those vulnerabilities are simple software bugs mm -hmm. that are being exploited for many years now in user applications and are now being exploited inside devices. Because uh, the other problem is that all of these components typically don't have modern exploit mitigation, mitigations that applications already introduced years ago. Mm -hmm. So. To answer your question about the UEFI, UEFI is one, only one type of architecture for that device type of mm -hmm. uh, software or firmware. That's right. Uh, unified extensible firmware um, um, architecture, firmware interface, uh, that was um, started to being adopted um, by modern IT systems about 10 years ago. Mm -hmm. And now majority of the IT equipment um, um, follows that architecture and the, and the system firmware runs um, that is UFI. So it's about 10 UFI. years now, right? Uh, about 10 years, yes. Right, okay. So most of the systems are running uh, the, that type of system firmware. And it's just one type of firmware. Mm -hmm. the, the amount of vulnerabilities it has it allows or enables adversaries to uh, compromise PCs, servers, network yeah. gear, and other type of equipment, uh, both remotely and use those systems as initial access vector, but also install persistent malware. That's right, yeah. Malware that is, you cannot get rid of that malware by reinstalling operating system or re-imaging the hard drive or even replacing the hard drive because those type of uh, those, that type of malware, mm -hmm. those type of implants or backdoors are in the firmware that is in the motherboard. Of That's right, yeah. yeah. So you talk about Black Lotus as one example of this uh, latest uh, discovered uh, vulnerability or exploit. It's a, it's a threat in the wild. So can you tell us how more advanced is Black Lotus compared to the other sort of earlier versions of the UEFI uh, vulnerabilities that were discovered? Uh, so the Black Lotus is, it's both advanced and not advanced because uh, it does exploit vulnerabilities in the, uh, uh, the main security architecture of the UEFI uh, system firmware that protects, um, protects the, 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 the system from uh, you know, being compromised at the boot level, so-called secure boot architecture and modern operating systems like Linux and, mm -hmm. uh, and Windows and other type of OSs, they adopted that secure boot architecture. So every, most of the modern systems have that. So the Black Lotus is exploiting vulnerabilities in that architecture mm -hmm. or in the code that is uh, implementing that, arch that, that protection. So from that perspective, it's, it's, uh, it's very advanced because it's the first type of uh, threats like that in the wild, discovered in the wild. Uh, but at the same time, um, Black Lotus follows a number of uh, threats that were discovered in the last three to four oh, years okay. that have been built based on even open source frameworks. Right. It, would, it, it would probably take uh, you know, a couple of weeks for threat actors to build a fully weaponized threat uh, or an implant to exploit UEFI. And there, we've seen a number of those um, implants or threat, uh, mm -hmm. uh, th threats like Lojax or Mosaic yeah. Grass or Moonbounce and so on and so forth. So from that perspective, uh, uh, Black Lotus is just an evolution. Yeah, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. it's just a repackaging of the sort of older version of the software. 
the and, malware rather. And, and evolution, uh, yes, uh, exploiting different mm -hmm. vulnerabilities, weaponizing and in injecting mm -hmm. itself in the different mm -hmm. points of a, of a, of, a, of that architecture in inside a, inside a PC, um, but definitely not the first one mm -hmm. uh, that we've seen. That's right. Yeah. So I was going to ask you about Secure Boot and how it the uh, Black Lotus can bypass Secure Boot, and that represents a I guess a slight at least escalation in terms of threat abilities. But before we go into that, right, I want to ask you, why is you know compromising firmware so attractive for threat actors? Uh, multiple reasons. One is that nobody will detect you there, find find you there. Because we've evolved our uh, uh, detection and protection controls at the software application level, yeah. at the operating system and above, right. we have a lot of those controls, security controls, including you know detecting uh, indicators of compromise mm -hmm. and malware uh, and, and so on and so forth. But uh, there are no controls. Nobody's looking at that level. So uh, once you compromise, um, you know that software inside device or a firmware inside device, then you're essentially staying there hidden for months or years. And we've seen those examples when uh, threat actors stay in the infrastructure uh, um, uh, for, for for a very long time. And uh, um, the other the other part is that staying persistent. Persistent meaning that even other measures will not mm -hmm. get rid of that malware or, or those threats, including reimaging those uh, those systems, sensing and response. Um, uh, but the other reason is exploiting vulnerabilities in firmware is simple. One of the misconceptions that we faced in the last few years is mm -hmm. that exploiting firmware is complicated. Yes. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. The reality is that it takes in often ca often case that those vulnerabilities are extremely simple. Uh, in you know in a, in a functionality that may be parsing some network traffic or, or you know JSON formats or mm -hmm. something like that those are extremely simple software vulnerabilities that uh, also are not protected by exploit mitigation techniques so for most of the threat actors that are looking for easy way uh, way into uh, the infrastructure they found that exploiting those vulnerabilities in in, in the firmware of devices is much simpler than developing a very complicated exploit chain uh, in addition to that, once you're in firmware, not only you are hidden and persistent, but you also have high level of privilege. Exactly. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. Um, you can you can damage the phys uh, system physically. You have full access uh, to the data on that mm -hmm. system. You have a full access to the entire mm -hmm. software stack mm -hmm. on that system. Uh, pretty much everything. I uh, I you know to give you an example, a a a, a firmware on a server. Um, if, if it's compromised, then it has access to all of the workloads, all of the virtual machines with all of the data exactly, running in that server. Right, exactly, yeah, that's right, yeah. So I think one question that many people will ask then is how do you, what is the initial point of compromise then? What do um, they normally, uh, you know, yeah, the tactics? It can be anything from a purely remote, unauthenticated compromise. Um, uh, if the firmware is exposed directly to the internet, mm -hmm. which happens in a, in a lot of cases in network devices, in uh, IoT devices, in servers, and in PCs too, uh, it can be delivered via a standard, uh, you know, phishing campaign, uh, malicious mm -hmm. uh, email messages, for example. Um, you know, a good, a, a good example of a threat actor, um, uh, Emotet malicious mm -hmm. spam campaign, mm -hmm. was delivering TrickBot. TrickBot um, malware also were pulling a module that was uh, exploiting firmware on, on the PCs. So it can be delivered by any um, right, yeah. standard mm -hmm. um, um, mechanism like phishing. Um, it can also be delivered by physical uh, tampering with uh, with an equipment, which yeah. is um, you know a little bit stealthier mm -hmm. um, access and probably used by um, uh, mostly uh, uh, nation state yeah. sponsored act. Yeah, yeah, that reminds me of a Bloomberg article um, that was published about 2018, I think, about you know how potentially some nation state actors are compromising the hardware supply chain to implant some malware into the firm well, into the hardware components, but that's a separate conversation. So coming back to secure boot then, in terms of, uh, we talk about mit mitigation, right? And you mentioned how Black Lotus can bypass secure boot. There's presumably other mitigations, right? That uh, have been around for some time, but I guess they are not 100% secure. Um, in terms of mitigating black lotus, so typically when, when a threat vector or threat, threat actor 
like Black Lotus uh, um, is introduced into a system, then most of the protections are ineffective. Mm. Because most of the protections are higher level of, um, of the stack yeah. and implemented by the operating system or maybe a, maybe a, maybe a security software. Um, and so threat actors like, um, like Black Lotus um, automatically bypass those. Yeah. Uh, so generally, there has to be a dedicated mitigation mm -hmm. plan or compensating control mm -hmm. for threats like Black Lotus. So mitigating um, mitiga mitigation typically involves, you know, one is er eradicating that, uh, that that threat from a system, which is oftentimes very replacing difficult. The entire <laughs> Re sometimes replacing an entire system, which we want to avoid, absolutely. But touching is not going to work, is it? As uh, not 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 if the system is already infected or compromised, absolutely. At, at that level, yeah. yeah. Okay. But it will work before or to prevent exploitation and infection of the system by Black Lotus, okay. because uh, threats like Black Lotus they exploit vulnerabilities, vulnerable firm vulnerable uh, system yes, software of course yeah so if mm -hmm. it's vulnerable and there is a patch available from a, from a vendor That's or right. a manufacturer then by installing that patch we um, defenders can at least prevent uh, those threats from uh, infecting the system um, you you started the podcast saying that you know a lot of the detection solutions out there right um, are sort of concentrated on the software application software layer and above so the detection solutions that we have in the market today are very, very few are focused around the firmware detection level. Uh, that, that's, that's why we need dedicated uh, technology. It's not a, an easy uh, task to no. discover a backdoor or an implant Definitely. inside a motherboard firmware or a baseboard management controller chip on a exactly. server or inside the network appliance, network device. There have to be dedicated technologies that are specific, that specifically know how to understand the, that, 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 that equipment, those devices, mm -hmm. and how to look for um, indicators of compromise, how to look, how to monitor integrity, how to understand what software and firmware are running there, how to do analysis of that and discover threat actors. Okay, so what would your advice be for you know organizations who are worried about uh, the security posture when it comes to their firmware? Well, I I, I think um, I think we we have a very significant supply chain problem in our infrastructure, regardless of what that infrastructure is. Um, PC or server infrastructure, network infrastructure, IoT or OT infrastructure, cloud infrastructure. Mm -hmm. All of that depends on a lot of external products and external, yeah. external hardware, devices, mm -hmm. as well as software products. So we need to build a plan to understand and verify what those products are made okay. of and what risk they bring to us. We need to understand which vulnerabilities we inherit by buying in and introducing those technologies and devices in our infrastructure, and then devise uh, some kind of a, a mitigation plan um, uh, for those vulnerabilities. And we also need to, we need to constantly look, has anything changed? Has anything changed in that uh, device? that critical server or a network load balancer or has anything changed in that software product that we've been using for the last few months uh, to monitor and discover threat actors that might have compromised it uh, in operations. So do an inventory assessment of their firmware, which is kind of difficult given there's not a lot of software bill of materials for firmware, is there? Oh, there's definitely a, there's definitely a build materials for hardware, for firmware, as as well as for software. So I would say that the first practical steps are to introduce intelligence and um, an assessment of the critical equipment, critical uh, technologies that would provide you know a visibility into vulnerabilities, visibility into bill of materials, uh, as well as the integrity measurement, uh, integrity uh, monitoring. And hopefully, Eclipsium is, uh, is one of those technologies that uh, organizations um, are given to choose that, that automate that at scale. Okay, right. Okay, so uh, thank you very much, Yuri, for your time today to you know, talk to us on this uh, very obscure and black box sort of perception that we have about hardware that is living in a lot of our devices and uh, also looking at the supply chain uh, risks. So thank you very much for your time today. Thank you, Jane. Thank you. Appreciate the conversation. 